everybody good good morning to you all so let's go ahead and get started here with that brain stretch taking a look what kind of things have or use electricity i see up there computers definitely have electricity and we use them um and we plug them in so it's kind of a little bit of both computers most definitely what else might have electricity or use electricity Good, a mouse, absolutely there, Brian. Mouse, lights, good. Microwave, especially if you just, you know, heated up some food, yep. A toaster, mm-hmm. Good, washer, all of these things. Good, Jazz, yeah, all of these things have electricity. We use a lot of different things. TV, yep, you betcha. If you play video games or anything like that, your Xbox, your PlayStation, whatever system that you use, absolutely. All of this has electricity. Now, what does it have to do with our lesson today? Well, we are going to be walking into a new lesson on electromagnetism. So all these things are going to have electricity and magnetism are going to interact all at time look at all that chris yeah exactly yeah we humans actually do have a little bit of electricity you betcha we do so let's go ahead and get started here let me grab your notes for you and you know the drill as i um open up and talk go through the announcements go ahead and start opening up your notes all right remember class connect sessions are recorded and distributed for learning purposes please print out um Please make sure that you are um, school appropriate and respectful in the chat box. Make sure that you don't put anybody's personal information or yourself. And like always, please make sure that you are, um, you're just being respectful in that chat box. Like always, you know what I'm always going to tell you is make sure that you are participating. I can't stress that enough. The more you participate, the more you get out of class, the more you get out of class, the better your grade is going to be. Trust me on that one. Not a joke. It will be much higher. So keep on participating. Keep on doing what you're doing. And um, you're going to do well. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and um, take a look at our calendar. Remember, it is the middle of week 10 of our 12 weeks together. It is day 50 of our 61 day adventure. We have 11 days left. That's still plenty of time. Hey, Brianna, that is still plenty of time to get all our work in, okay? Just remember, though, that we don't wanna be, um, it's coming up pretty fast. So we don't wanna be towards the end of the trimester and you're like, I'll just wait, it's good. I'll just wait, we're good. No, don't wait until the very end. Even though you have until the very last day, which is June 7th at 11.59 p.m. to get your work in, you don't wanna wait till the very last minute. I have seen multiple times, I've been in this game a long time, I have seen that it, it your, the system will crash, something will happen to your computer. Just make sure that you are getting to that magic number of 60% now and not later, okay? If you are um, not to that 60% yet, I suggest that you focus in on those unit exams. You may say, well, I, ju I did them all right, but if they're low scores, they're not gonna help you. Go back, look at those recordings, make sure that you focus in on those unit exams. Those are a um, lot of points for stuff that is pretty, pretty easy, okay? So get those unit exams completed. So with that, no worries, no worries. Yeah, no worries. Um, so with that, make sure you're just um, getting that in. Today is Wednesday, May 22nd. Like I said before, we are going to be walking into a new unit on electromagnetism. So let's go ahead and jump into that and see where we're at. Now, even though we are in a new unit, there is only two lessons in this whole unit. So these two lessons are right here. I'm, I'm bringing the circuits together. So on Friday, we are going to do circuits and on um and then today we're just going to be doing that um, lesson here on electromagnetism. And I noticed some people walk it in. I just want to make sure I get you all. All right. Perfect. Okay. So if you haven't looked down here before, um, we do have a unit five exam. Now our unit five exam is going to be a little bit different than before. Units one through four are done independently. That means they are done on your own. Unit five is actually done here in class. Now the unit five exam is 10 questions. We do the first five on Tuesday on May 28th, which is the next week. And we do the second five on Wednesday, May 29th. So that means how we do this is it's going to be kind of like a um, complete on your own. 
I will help you out. We'll talk about the question. I'll give you some hints. I'll give you some pointers. But on in the end, you are going to do it yourself. Now, let's just like um, any of the other complete on your owns in this class, you can check your answer with me. You can um, obviously ask me questions and same um, do the same like that. But we um, just we're going to do that here in class. OK, so that's a nice part about that. So just to be um, reminding of that. All right, let's go ahead and see what we're going to be doing today. We're going to define electricity and magnetism. We're going to predict how two magnetic poles will interact, and we'll predict how two electrical charges will interact. All right, with that being said, I'm going to give you just another 20 seconds to get those notes opened up with and raise your hand. I see a lot of people up there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So 20 seconds up on the clock. Here we go. Raise your hand once you have them open. All right. So still looking for Tara, um, Samaria, Mia, and Juliana, Joey, and Jared, Hannah, and Ethan. Make sure we get those hands up there. Thank you so much, Tara. Thank you, Mia. Thank you, Juliana. Thank you, Joey, Alexandria, Carlitos, Ethan, Hannah, Jared, and Samaria. Make sure you get those hands up there. Thank you, everybody else, to get those hands up there so quickly. Makes life so much easier, and we move a little bit faster. All right, let's go ahead and talk our first brainstorm here. I'm going to actually switch gears here, but before we do that, I want you to keep these things in mind, and you may have seen this multiple times, but what happens when you bring two magnets close together? So I'm going to go ahead and switch my cameras. There we go. Make myself a little bit bigger. There we go. And so I have two magnets here. Okay, now hopefully let my camera focus in just a tad. I'll help it out a little bit. There we go. So I have two magnets here. Both have the north and both have the south pole. So if I bring these two magnets together that are both the same, so if I have north and north, what do you think is going to happen? Are they going to kind of push apart or are they going to kind of connect together? What do you think is going to happen when I put these two together? They're two norths. What do you think is going to happen? Yeah, they're going to push apart. Good, Brian. Good. Anybody else? Yeah, good, Nadine. Yeah, and I agree with both of you here that when I bring these together and I'm not doing anything, they're going to push apart. They're not going to come together. Just like when you play with those magnetic trains, right, and you try to get those trains to connect together and they're not doing it. So these things are not going, they're going to be pushing apart. Now, what will happen if I go ahead and I have a south and a north pole? Yeah, it's like something's blocking them, right? Absolutely, Jazz. What's going to happen if I have a north and a south pole? Two different magnetic poles. They're going to come together. Yeah, they are. And all I have to do is just like push them together and they stick. Okay, they stick together. And I, again, they're wanting to stick together. Now, that's important to know. Because magnets both have a south and a north pole, and obviously what we are going to be noticing today is how electricity and magnetism are related. Now, one thing that you do want to remember with magnets is obviously this one little additive that I say and one little saying that always happens, and maybe you have heard about it, but how many of you have heard about opposites attract and like repel? Now, when I say that opposites attract, I think of relationships, right? I think of the different relationships we have in our life, whether it's your best friend or whether it's, you know, your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. You have your relationships. Now, if you take a look at those relationships, sometimes the best relationships or the best, you know, are going to be the people that we have that are oppositely, that we are opposite of us, right? I will tell you right now, my husband and I are complete opposites, okay? My husband is very shy. Now, me, on the other hand, I can talk to anybody and I can talk to the tree by myself. I will talk to the wall. I have no problem talking with anybody, amazingly enough. So me and but my husband is very quiet. Well, we work well together. We're very opposite. So opposites attract right in our relationship. And you may think about that in other in your personal relationships. Well, people who are somewhat similar to us, we butt heads, right? We kind of almost repel, we're button heads, there's nothing we agree upon because we're so much alike. 
And it could be like with your, your brother or sister or maybe another friend of yours that you kind of just, you, you, you like them and you enjoy being around, but sometimes you're just, you butt heads. So when you think about this stuff and when you think about magnets or anything else today, I want you to think of this um, saying, opposites attract like repel. And I think of it just like in relationships, okay? So let's go ahead and first of all, jump into a little bit of chemistry. Now I'm gonna introduce you to the atom. Now this bit of chemistry is something that you will get when you come into chemistry, hopefully with me. But the atom is, is one of those things that is like the basic thing we talk about here in chemistry. Well, the atom is all matter that is made up of atoms, okay? All matter is made up of atoms. My calculator, myself, I mean my cell phone, all of it's all made up with atoms. Now, atoms are the smallest unit of matter. If you break down a gold atom, it is no longer gold, okay? Now, an atom has three parts to it, and we call these parts subatomic particles. The first part that we're going to talk about is the protons. Now, the protons sit in the nucleus, which is in the middle here, and those protons are positive, okay? Now, now the next thing that is in the nucleus is the next particle, which is neutrons, okay? Neutrons are these green ones. Now, neutrons don't have a charge. They're kind of like the referee. Now, I'm going to give you a little tidbit here, is that protons are the identity of the atom. If I have a certain number of protons, for example, if I have um, eight protons in that nucleus, guess what? I have an oxygen atom. If I have nine protons in that nucleus, I have a fluorine atom, okay? So the protons are actually the identity of the atom. What type of atom is it, okay? Now, neutrons, like I said, are the referees. Remember what I just talked about? If I have a bunch of the same, they're going to repel. Well, in the nucleus, if I have a bunch of positive protons, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to start repelling each other. And so the neutrons sit in there that have no charge, and they're going to sit there and be like, oh, please don't do that. Don't do that. They're kind of the referees of everybody. Now, protons and neutrons do have an atomic mass unit or a weight, and that is about 1 AMU. Okay, so yes, that gives the atom its weight. Now, what's floating around here on the, end, on the ends here is what we call the negative electrons. They orbit around the nucleus. They have about a negative one charge, and they do not have a weight. They are so small and so fast that we, they do not have a weight, okay? All right, let's go ahead and grab number two. The word is matter, M-A-T-T-E-R. I'm going to give you about 25 seconds. All righty, Tara, Samaria, Joshua, Joey, and Hannah, Chris, make sure we get those hands up there. The word is matter, M-A-T-T-E-R. Excellent. Thank you, Joshua. All right, let's go ahead now and move on. So now that we understood the atom, and again, this is very basic because when you go into chemistry, we will dive into this and tear this apart and get know everything ins and outs of the atom and what it all does and what are all these um particles and um, that what ha what what do they all do in an atom okay so let's now go ahead and talk a little bit about electricity remember electromagnetism it's where electricity and magnets kind of work hand in hand but first of all we need to identify what electricity is so electricity is really the flow or the movement of electrical charges okay of either positive or negative charges. That is the that is what electricity is. Now, the best example of electricity is what we can see is lightning and thunder, okay? Now, how does lightning and thunder happen? A lot of us might think that lightning comes from the sky, but that is absolutely wrong. It actually comes from both the ground and the sky and meet in the middle and collide, okay? Now, particles in the clouds actually um, collide, resulting in a buildup of electrical charges. Then what happens is, is that clouds build up with those positives on top in the clouds and the negatives on the bottom of the cloud. Well, since opposites attract, what happens there on the ground is that positive charges actually build up in the ground beneath the cloud. Well, if opposites attract and positive and negative really want to be hanging out together, well, what's going to happen is that since there's such a buildup and positives on the ground, it's going to want to 
come together and when it comes together it rushes towards each other and collides when it collides you hear the thunder and obviously the result of it is lightning which is the electricity okay so that's how lightning and thunder happen and I'm actually going to show you a quick gif on how that happens really fast here we go so as you can see we have the um, negative on the bottom the positive on top then there's the positive that's building up on the bottom here and then once it have built so much up it kind of reaches down reaches up because they want to attract and boom collision you have now lightning and thunder okay so there you go another cool dinner topic you know where does lightning and thunder come from everyone's probably gonna say from the sky well you can correct them and say nope it's from both so that is a little bit about electricity really what your takeaway here is that electricity is the flow of electrical charge go ahead and grab number three I'm gonna give you just about a ooh, I'll give you about 20 more seconds to get this one in all righty so again Samaria Nicole Monty Jared Hannah Ethan thanks Brian Make sure we get those hands up there once you have your um, word in flow, F-L-O-W. Samaria, Nicole, Monty, Jared, Sh or Hannah, Ethan. Make sure we get those hands up there. Still waiting on y'all. All right, now let's go ahead and since we have the basis of electricity, you have also may have heard of static electricity, okay? Now, static electricity is when electron charges do not move between materials. There is no charge that moves between materials, but the material as an overall net charge. Well, what does that all mean? Well, that's just simply result is saying is that there is an imbalance between positive and negative charges within a uh, material. Now, what happens is, is that within the material that occurs, electrons move from one material to the other. Now, if the electron receiving material is either isolated or not an electrical conductor, it tends to hold on to the electrons. If it holds on to the electrons, it actually results in building of an electrical charge. So again, it's kind of like a buildup of, of electrons. If a, too much electrons comes to one type of material, Okay, you have negative, electrons are negative, right? Since the charge is not moving, it is referred to as static electricity. Now, when the conditions allow the buildup to be released or to flow, then of the surplus, then the static electricity is discharged and it becomes a current electricity. How many of you have rubbed your feet against the carpet and then your little brother or sister comes by and you like tap them to zap them? to um, shock them is what we call it how many of you done that my brother did it to me all the time when I was younger okay and so actually sometimes I do it to my kids if they're being naughty <laughs> so yeah what that's happening is is um, is that you are creating a friction and even though that the material between your shoe or your sock and the carpet, there is no um, movement of electrical charge. What happens is that electrons are building up on one side and building up more on your side because you are slightly a little electrically charged, okay, are building up on one side. When there is a moment and for to uh, release that electricity, that electricity is able to flow, then that surplus of static electricity is discharged and you are shocking somebody else. Okay, so yeah, I do it all the time to my little brother. Now you know why it happens. So it, just remember, static electricity is not a movement of electrical charges. It is actually a movement of electrons that builds up. Once it builds up to a point, then it needs to be released, and that's where you shock it. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and grab number four really fast. I'm going to give you just another 20 seconds to get that one in. All righty. All righty. So Tara, Samaria, Nicole, Monty, Juliana, Hannah, and Chris, make sure we get those hands up there. The word is net and ET does not have to be capitalized, but it does need to be spelled correctly. Awesome. All right. Let's go ahead now and test our knowledge. I have four different vocabulary words up here. Nucleus, electricity, static electricity, and electrons. 
with their definition right on this side. Your whiteboard tools are available to you. I want you to grab your highlighter tool, your pen tool, your um, whatever tool you need, uh, line tool, doesn't matter what color, but what you're gonna do is you're going to match the term nucleus, what is the nucleus, what is electricity, what is static electricity, okay, and then what is electrons with the correct definition on the right-hand side. I'm gonna give you 15 minutes to graffiti up my board here. So with that being said, Go ahead and grab your tool of choice, your weapon of choice, and make my board nice and pretty. 15 seconds up on the board. Go, go, go. Again, if you don't know all of them, put what you know. It's always important to put what you know. We Somebody else can fill in the blanks for you. Good, I'm seeing two people up there. Nice job, Nadine. Let's get some more um, action up there. Good, good jazz. I like that color, by the way. Good, Mia. Good, Alexandria. Excellent, nice job, everybody. Eight more seconds. Perfect. Nice job, everybody. Nice, nice. I'm going to go ahead and put our light whiteboard tools on hold here. So let's go ahead and take a look. From what I'm seeing, I think I see, I see one mistake, but that's, hey, that's good. So let's go ahead and go over it. As I go over it, obviously, lock it in for number five. So nucleus is the center of an atom that's made up of protons and neutrons. Hey, that's important when you come into chemistry. So if you know that one, you're good, okay? Electricity is just really the flow of electrical charges, okay? That flow means movement of electrical charges. Um, static electricity is when a material has a net overall charge, but the electrical charges do not move. So there is no movement of electrical charges like lightning. It's just sa saying that the electrons are moving. There's a buildup of those electrons, and then it needs to release. Once it has the opportunity to release, it then releases into a static electricity. And then finally, electrons here is where negative charges, they are negatively charged, they have no mass, and they orbit the nucleus. Again, if you know that one, you are in good shape for chemistry. Can't wait. All right, with that being said, I'm going to give you all just another, oh, let's see where we're at. Ooh. I'll give you about another 30 seconds to get that one in. All right, just check it in here, looking good. T Tara, Samaria, Monty, Joey, Hannah, Ethan, uh, Chris. Nice job, Tara. Thank you, Joey. Thank you, Aisha and Karma. Nice job, Karma. Uh, Brian, beautiful. Good job, Justice and Justin. Juliana, nice. You guys are doing well. We're going to get out early, I think. All right, let's go ahead and continue on. Again, keep on working hard here. All right, now we're going to switch a little bit gears here. We talked a little bit about electricity. Now we're going to go into magnetism. Now, the reason why we do that is because we're going to talk about a little bit of magnetism, but then we're going to bring it together because they're both going to have similar properties or similar ways that you think about them. So magnetism is a force that can attract or repel objects if they contain ma ma magnetic material, okay? So like my little two magnets here, they contain magnetic material. And again, if I bring the opposites together, opposites attract, and then like will repel. Okay, they're going to repel each other. That's magnetism. Now, a magnet has both a north pole and a south pole. So if you take a look here, if you look closer, one north, one south. Now, when we take a look at a north and south pole, we are also going to take a look at something on our Earth. But before we do that, I want to go ahead and um, grab number six there. Grab number six. The word is force. F-O-R-C-E. I'm going to give you about 25 seconds to get that one. 25 seconds up on the clock. All right. So let's go ahead and just make sure here. Again, once you've got that in there, the word force, please raise your hand so I know you are good to go. 
Thank you, Nadine. Chris and Hannah, Monty, Samaria, Tara. All right, excellent. So now we're gonna go actually take a look, look at a compass. Now, we all have seen a compass, and here is a compass right here. Now, a compass is actually works on magnets, okay? Compass works on magnets. So if the compass is wants to point to the North Pole, well, it's actually tr um, attracted to what we call Earth's geographic north. Okay, the North Pole is where Santa's at, and obviously that's going to be the Earth's geographic north, all right? South Pole is Earth's geographic south. That's where the penguins live. That's where Antarctica is. That's going to be where the south points on a compass. Now, if a compass is run by magnets, well, that is in fact saying that the Earth's magnetic south points to um, Earth's geographic north. Now, you might think, what are you talking about, Mrs. Bull? This is craziness. They're like opposites. Well, just like I said, opposites attract. Remember, we take a you know look at two different magnets. Opposites are going to come together, okay? The like are going to repel. So I'm going to show you this graphic here, okay? Like I said before, when you take a look here, you know that the geographic north is at the top. Okay, that's where Santa lives. It's at the top of the world there. Okay, geographic south. When we talk about geographic south, we're talking about the South Pole where the penguins are, Antarctica, and that area. Okay, that's geographic south. But if I actually had a big, huge magnet, because our Earth is magnetized, by the way, if the Earth had a big, huge magnet right down the center of the um, Earth like this, then guess what? Our compass, since it's pointing to the north, is actually attracted to Earth's magnetic south. It's opposite from its geographic place. Now, remember, when you hear the word geographic, I want to make sure we clarify this, is that when you hear the word geographic, we're talking about a place, okay? When I say magnetic, that means that we're talking about where it's magnetized. What part of the magnet are we talking about? So when I take my compass and I try to find north, and I'll, right there, let me see, north is right there for me. Okay, it's a little bit off to the side there. Because it's pointing to the north, it's attracted to Earth's magnetic south. Opposite goes when we talk a look, look at the place geographic south pole is actually Earth's magnetic north. Opposites attract. OK, remember that because there's a question coming up on it later on. So geographic north, magnetic south, hand in hand, friends. OK, geographic south, the place, South Pole, Antarctica, penguins, that's going to be magnetic north, hand in hand, opposites attract their friends. OK, so let's go ahead and practice this a little bit. So when I take a look at these two poles, north and north, are they alike or opposite? Who can tell me in the chat box? Are they alike or opposite? North and north. Yeah, good, Nadine. They're absolutely alike. Yep, good. They are like. Now, if they're like, are they going to attract or repel? Think of a, think of a, a magnet. Are they going to attract or repel? Yes. Good, Nadine. Good, Jazz. Yeah, they're going to repel. Most definitely. Okay. Now, let's take a look at the next one. The next one is north and south. Are they opposite or are they like? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Beautiful. I'm seeing all those answers popping up there. Yeah, they're definitely opposite. Okay. So since opposite, they're opposite, what are they going to do? Are they going to attract or repel? Mm-hmm. Good, Alexandria. Good, Jazz. Good, Nadine. Yeah, they're going to attract. Good, Joshua. Good, Brian. Yeah, they're going to attract. The whole saying of opposites attract. Now, taking a look here at the bottom one, we know that south and south are alike. So, again, they, too, are going to repel. Okay. Now, 
We talked about magnets. We know that opposites attract with magnets. We know that like ones were repel. Well, guess what? The same thing happens when we're talking about electrical charges. So when I take a look at electrical charges, I know that the same concept still applies. If I have two positive electrical charges, guess what? They're going to be repelled. They don't want to be together. But if I have two oppositely charged particles, like a positive and a negative, guess what? They're going to want to come together. Opposites attract. Okay? So when I have two like, they repel. When I have opposites, they come together. Okay? All right. So let's go ahead and practice that a little bit here. So I have a positive and a negative. So a positive and a negative. Are these like or opposite? Are these like or opposite? Yeah, good. I'm seeing those answers popping up there. Yeah, they're definitely opposite, right? So if they're opposite, what are they going to do? Yeah, good, Alexandria. You got it. They are definitely going to attract. Okay? They are definitely going to attract. Excellent. So let's take a look at this one. Next one here. I have a positive and a positive. Positive and a positive. <gasps> they are the same. That's right, Jazz. So definitely a like. Good, like, yep. So if they are the same, if they are like, what are they going to do? Mm-hmm. Yep, you've got it, everybody. You've got it. They will repel. Okay, they will repel. Same thing goes when I have a negative and negative. They're both like and they both will repel. Okay, excellent job. So now we're going to do a complete on your own. We're going to break it up. There's two on there, but we're going to do the first one first and then the second one second, okay? So I'm going to cover up the first one and then um, and then we'll do that. Uh, here we go. Then we'll do the second one, okay? So I'm going to cover up number eight for now and let's take a look just at number seven. Now we're going to take a look at electrical charges, okay? These are two electrical charges. So I have two positive electrical charges. So that means I have a positive and a positive. Are they like or opposite? Are they alike or opposite? Opposite, right, Joshua? So they are, are they, let me see, two positives? Two positives, are they opposite? Oh yeah, good Joshua, good correction. Good Jazz, yeah. Yeah, they are the same, right? I have one here and one here. So I have two of the same. So if I have two of the same, are they going to attract? Are they going to repel? Are they not going to interact? They'll interact, then repel. They will repel, then, in, or, then attract. I will tell you right now, it's none of these, okay? All right, go ahead and answer this one on your own. It's number seven, go ahead and answer this on your own. And um, if you want to check your answer, you can always check your answer with me. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to get that one in, okay? 30 seconds. And then we'll do number eight. Raise your hand when you are finished. Good, Jazz. Yeah, good, Alexandria. Good, Myra. Yep, good, Karma. Well, think about it, Nicole. If they are two opposites, remember our whole saying, opposites attract, like, will, what? Yes. That's it. Good job. Yes. Perfect. Nice job. Again, once you're finished, raise your hand. Good, good, good. Excellent. 
Yep, good, Mia. That's it. You got it, Mia. So looking for Ethan, Jared, Joey, Monty, Samaria. All right, excellent. Let's go ahead and go on to the next one, okay? So we got number seven. Now we're going to take a look at magnets here. Now, I'm going to underline a few things so that you can help it out. But if the south pole of a compass magnet points to the Earth's geographic south, so we're talking about the place south, Antarctica, penguins, the south pole, the, you know, the place, the south pole, then that must be the Earth's what? I'm going to tell you right now, these are not the correct answers. So what do you think it's going to be? I'm going to send it back to this. What do you think it is? Here's find geographic south. What is the Earth's magnet? What is it? Where is the Earth's magnet? I'm going to give you another 30 seconds to point uh, to get this one. And I'm going to give you another 30 seconds. Again, I'll check your answers in the question answers box. Let me lower our hands. There you go. There you go. And then when you're finished, go ahead and raise those up. I am going to check answers right now. Good, Jazz, that's correct. Myra, that's correct. Joshua, that's correct. Okay, geographic north, south poles right here. Antarctica, penguins, wherever you want to think about it. But what is its magnetic? What is its Earth's magnetic? Good, Alexandria, that's correct. Again, once you have that, go ahead and raise your hand. Still looking for a few of us. Tara, Samaria, Nadine, Monty, and Mia. Brian and Ethan, Hannah, Jared, Joey, Juliana, Karma. Geographic South is down here, but what is what is its Earth's magnet? Magnetic what? Earth's magnetic what? Yep. Well, I don't know what what it would be on yours, but take a look. I it's not magnetic negative or positive. I tell you that it's either magnetic north or magnetic south. What is it, Earth's magnet? What, karma? Oh, that's where the place is. Geographic south is right here, but what is its magnetic? Earth's magnetic what? These two are always going to be friends. They're going to be, yeah. Or, what is this right here? Going to be opposite than the actual place, karma. Yes, good, excellent, that's it. All right, beautiful job, everybody. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, let's go ahead and close us out. I know we're a little bit over time, I apologize. So we defined electricity and magnetism. We predicted how two magnetic poles will interact, and then we predicted how two electrical charges will interact. With that being said, if you can, go ahead and submit your notes. Once you've submitted your notes, you will be free to go. Have a wonderful day, everybody. I'll see you back here on 